Scientists say mountains as old as the Appalachians should have worn down to dust long before the first dinosaurs walked the Earth. Yet their ridges still carve the eastern United States, hiding a story stranger than survival. These ancient peaks were forged in supercontinental collisions so violent they built roots deeper than the Rockies, roots that outlasted eons of destruction. But if erosion was relentless, why did time fail to erase them? The answer rewrites what we know about how mountains endure. It begins with a paradox geologists could not ignore. The Appalachian Mountains stretch across eastern North America, their ridges and valleys an enduring feature on maps and in memory. Yet, by the logic of geology, these mountains are an anomaly. Most of the world's great mountain ranges, like the Himalayas, the Alps, the Andes, are young, measured in tens of millions of years. The Appalachians, by contrast, are ancient. Their origins reach back 500 million years, predating the Atlantic Ocean and even the first dinosaurs. Mountains are supposed to be temporary, erased by the steady work of rain, rivers, and wind. Over hundreds of millions of years, erosion should have planned them flat, leaving only a trace in the rock record. But from Alabama to Newfoundland, the Appalachian spine persists, a broken chain of highlands and deep cut valleys. Geologists have calculated that during their prime, the Appalachians may have rivaled the Himalayas in height their peaks soaring several kilometers into the Paleozoic sky. Since then, as much as 15 miles, nearly 25 kilometers of rock has been stripped away. Even so, today's landscape still rises hundreds, sometimes thousands of meters above the surrounding plains. This survival stands in stark contrast to the fate of most ancient ranges. Elsewhere, time reduces mountains to gentle hills or buried roots. Yet the Appalachians defy that rule. Their very presence raises a fundamental question. How can a mountain chain so old, so battered by time, still dominate the land? The answer lies not just in their age, but in the extraordinary forces that built them. Nearly half a billion years ago, the eastern edge of what would become North America faced a series of relentless collisions. Ancient continents, Laurentia, Avalonia, and eventually Africa drove toward each other and closed the Iapetus Ocean, squeezing the land between them. The force of these impacts was immense. Sediments that had settled quietly on the ocean floor were thrust upward, folded, and buried deep beneath new mountain roots. The crust thickened as slabs of rock stacked atop one another, creating a super range that at its peak rivaled the Himalayas for height and scale. Seismic imaging today reveals the evidence of this ancient violence. Beneath the Appalachians, the crust plunges far deeper than the North American average, reaching thicknesses of 45 to over 50 kilometers in places. These roots are the submerged foundation, a hidden mass of strong, metamorphosed rock that anchors the range. Gravity surveys and seismic profiles confirm that this crustal root is not just a relic. It still supports the Svadern Highlands, much like the unseen bulk of an iceberg keeps its tip afloat. A USGS geologist says that the Appalachians stand today because their roots run deep, thicker than almost anywhere else on the continent. This deep architecture, forged during the Taconic, Acadian, and Alleghenian collisions, is what gave the range its initial strength. 
Without these buried foundations, the mountains would have long since vanished, erased by the slow but steady forces that followed. For more than 300 million years, the Appalachian Mountains have faced an unending assault by the forces of erosion. Every rainfall, every freeze and thaw, every gust of wind has chipped away at their peaks and slopes. Rivers carved deep channels, carrying away grains of sand and silt, while chemical weathering dissolved minerals and weakened rock from within. Over time, glaciers at the northern edge of the range scoured the bedrock, scraping valleys and leaving behind a patchwork of debris. The scale of this destruction is staggering. Geologists estimate that as much as 15 miles, nearly 25 kilometers of rock have been stripped from the highest summits since the mountains first rose. Sediments washed from the range built thick deposits in distant basins and along the Atlantic margin. The coal fields of Pennsylvania and West Virginia, the limestone valleys of Kentucky and Tennessee, all owe their origins to this relentless transport of material from mountain to plain. Yet the pace of removal was not constant. Some periods saw rapid downcutting as rivers found new courses or climates shifted to wetter extremes. At other times, erosion slowed, but it never truly stopped. The mountains shrank, their jagged heights planed down to rolling uplands and broad valleys. What remains today is only a fraction of the original mass. The bulk of the ancient range now lies scattered as sand, clay, and gravel far from its source. Still, despite the loss, the Appalachian spine persists, proof that something in their makeup resisted the full power of destruction. The range survived by revealing its strongest parts, by leaving behind resistant ridges of hard metamorphic rock that weather more slowly than their neighbors. That endurance, subtle but relentless, is why we can still trace the outline of a half a billion year old mountain chain across the eastern United States. How the Appalachians survived half a billion years of destruction. Beneath the rolling forests and winding rivers, the true shape of the Appalachians is written in stone. What stands today is not the original mountain range, but the exposed skeleton, layers of rock that once lay buried deep within the earth. In the Valley and Ridge province, the landscape reads like a barcode, long parallel ridges of quartzite and hard sandstone, separated by broad valleys carved into softer shales and limestones. These ridges are not random survivors. They are the remnants of rocks that resisted the relentless work of water, wind, and ice. A geologist from a regional university stands at a rocky outcrop and traces the edge of a ridge with her hand. She explains that quartzite and gneiss became these ridges because they are tough, much tougher than the rocks around them. As the mountains eroded, their strongest bones stayed behind. In places such as Pennsylvania and West Virginia, the Silurian Tuscarora quartzite forms knife-edge ridges that rise sharply above the valleys. In the Blue Ridge, Billion-year-old gneiss and granite make up the high ground, their crystalline structure resisting weathering for hundreds of millions of years. The valleys below follow the path of least resistance, where limestone and shale gave way to time. The pattern is so pronounced that geologists describe it as a kind of inversion. In some areas, the original folds of the mountains have been flipped by erosion. Synclines that were once low now support ridges of quartzite, while anticlines that were once high have been hollowed into valleys where weak shale has vanished. The Appalachians' modern form is the result of this selective survival. What remains is not the summit, but the skeleton 
the hardest rock revealed and accentuated by the slow destruction of everything else. Far from being static, the crust beneath the Appalachians is still on the move. As erosion strips away rock, the land rebounds, a process known as isostasy. The weight of mountains lost to rivers and time is balanced by a slow, persistent uplift from below. GPS networks anchored across the northern Appalachians now record this motion in real time. Some highland stations register upward shifts of nearly one to two millimeters per year, tiny on a human scale, but over thousands of years enough to raise entire ridges. NASA and USGS geodesists confirm that the crust here is quietly adjusting, rising as the burden of eroded stone lessens. River gorges deepen, valleys in size, but the land itself is not settling into stillness. Instead, the ancient roots continue to buoy the range upward, maintaining relief even as the cycle of destruction grinds on. In the valleys carved between Appalachian ridges, slabs of limestone and shale hold secrets from a vanished world. Fossils of brachiopods, cacamechiopods, corals and trilobites are common in the Lexington limestone of Kentucky, the Trenton and Martinsburg formations of Pennsylvania, and the Marcellus and Hamilton groups of New York and West Virginia, evidence that these lowlands were once the floors of ancient seas. Along the ridgelines, satellite and LIDAR imagery reveal ruler strait valleys and fault lines, structural scars from the collisions that built the super range. Those scars still guide rivers, and they shape where modern earthquakes occur. The forests that cloak these slopes are more than scenery. Nowhere on Earth matches the Southern Appalachians for salamander diversity. More than 50 species thrive here, many found nowhere else. Their survival tied to the region's stability through ice ages and tectonic upheaval. Yet the story is not only one of endurance. In places like West Virginia, mountaintop removal mining has stripped away entire summits, exposing fossil layers, but also erasing ancient archives in decades. Standing at a ridge overlook, a field park geologist reflects, every layer in these mountains is a chapter of Earth's story. Oceans rising and falling, continents colliding, forests surviving against time. Our choices now decide what remains for the next chapter. Today, the worn ridges of the Appalachians still rise, defying the odds written in stone. As satellite data shows ongoing uplift, these ancient peaks remind us that resilience is not about resisting change, but about adapting to it. The Earth endures, and so do the stories it carves in rock.